In this video, we present the solution to question number one for practice exam number one for math 1210. In this one, we're asked to expand the logarithm, the log base five of the cube root of x squared plus one over x squared minus one. So what we're gonna need to use here are our laws of logarithms that are useful for expanding uh, logarithmic expressions. The first one that comes into mind, since the function inside of the logarithm is a fraction of two functions, uh, we're gonna first use what we call the second law of logarithms, which tells us that if you take a log, <coughs> any base whatsoever, we'll call it base A, if you take the log of A divided by B, this is equal to the log base A of the numerator minus the log base A of the denominator. So that's the expression we're going to, or that's the law we're going to use right here. So that then turns our logarithm expression. We're going to get the log base 5. The base doesn't change. We're going to get the cube root of x squared plus 1 as the first part. And then we subtract from that the log base 5 of x squared minus 1. And then so proceeding for what can we do now, because if you check the, solu uh, the possible solutions, none of those match up so far. We can expand it a little bit more. Um, I want to bring to your attention law number three of logarithms that told us that if you have the log base a of, say, a to the n power, then exponents inside of the logarithms come out as coefficients. And so this becomes n times the log base a of capital A right there. And so if we apply the third law, to this first logarithmic expression, since we're taking the cube root of the whole thing, that's the one third power, we can pull out a one third coefficient. And so we get one third times the log base five of x squared plus one. And so you'll notice that uh, most of these logarithms that have an x squared plus one have some type of coefficient in front of one third. That's where that thing's coming from. So while some of them seem to be good to go, some of them, still a little bit more confusing, what more can we do? Turns out the first law comes into play as well because when you look at the denominator x squared minus one, that actually factors as a difference of squares x minus one and x plus one, like so. In which case then the first law of logarithms comes into play that tells us if we take log base a of a times b, this can factor as log of a plus the log of b. And so applying that to the second part right here, log base 5 of x squared minus 1, that'll become, and it should be a minus sign right here, because originally uh, we were subtracting. So we're going to end up with a log base 5 of x minus 1 plus a log base 5 of x plus 1 like so. Now you'll notice this negative sign actually distributes onto both pieces. So I'm just going to incorporate it right now. Drop this parenthesis whatsoever. So we have a minus sign right here. And then this plus right here actually will be a minus when it's distributed. So this actually is our expanded form. We're going to look for a solution that looks just like this. We're going to get one third log of x squared plus 1 minus the log of x minus 1 minus the log of x plus 1. And so that then leads us to choose option D.